if God's not faithful, then what's the point? You know, we hear the, uh, the adage where it says, and I mentioned it in my last video, but I think it's, I just want to go deeper into it, that God will never give us more than we can handle. And if that's the case, then why would God ever need to be faithful, right? Um, when we think about faithful, I don't think you're old faithful. <laughs> you know that, that, that that's going to, there's going to be an explosion in Yellowstone Park and all this rotten egg smell is going to show up. I don't know how frequently it does it. I just know it's faithfully it does it. Is it every 15 minutes, something like that? Something like that. Point being, point being is faithful is, is the only thing that gets me through when I, when I sit there and consider everything that's going on and all my thoughts and all my dreams and all my successes and all my failures. I don't know how people do it without God. I don't remember how I used to do it. How did I, how do they, what do they do? And I don't, I don't say that with condemnation or judgment. I just know it's so much better knowing that we have a God who is faithful, that we can trust through every hardship and every failure and every shame that we've gone through. We have a God who is faithful. His word is true. And what is, we were just talking about earlier, but what's the opposite of faithful? Um, so I went to, I went to dictionary.com not because I don't I always like their definitions, but I, I don't I, I, I don't often care as much about the definition as I care about the synonyms and antonyms. And I really like antonyms because they kind of help you picture the opposite of the word, which helps you frame the word. So the fir there are three words that popped up, and I, and I kind of do them in this order. So the first antonym for faithfulness is disloyalty. And, and that we, we kind of get. Um, who wants to have anybody in their life that is disloyal? Right, right. And then the next one is um, is treachery, which takes it even down a little bit level. You know, there's some. So it's not just it's not just you weren't loyal. It was you were actually, tr you know, treacherous towards someone. Yeah, and I, I mean, do you really know? And I, you probably do. I'm I'm looking back in my past. I did have, I mean, a significant person in my life that was absolutely treacherous towards me have i ever been treacherous i think you have to be awfully intentional to be treacherous it's it is it's an intentional action it's a there's almost a forethought of it so okay so we got treachery we well, have yeah and, tre and treachery speaks to evil versus goodness but the the last one was the one that kind of like grabbed me in the soul it's disregard and that, which is the opposite of faithful. Well, it's and it uh, here's what I like about disregard because disregard speaks to what we feel or really how we feel when someone is unfaithful to us. So when someone is unfaithful, we feel disregarded. And you know, there are some words as in I mean, you'd be look up the definition, the exact yeah. definition of disregard, but you you have you ever been disregarded? And it's like the ultimate rejection. It's like you're not even worthy. Yeah, the words that go with disregard. So the synonyms for disregard Same are as. contempt, disdain. I mean, these are not words we want to feel. Disrespect, inattention, indifference, neglect, negligence, scorn. Scorn. Oh, you remember I taught. I've taught. If you've been following us at all, I've, I've discussed that the that when um, that study that came out of Japan by the Japanese man who who had the two things of water, and they've also done it with rice. Where one of the one of the, the well, let's say the cups of water, he spoke loving things to him, wonderful words. You are lovely. You are kind. You are healthy. You are just beautiful words. But the other, and even just hearing Jeff say the words that he just said. There's an energy about them that even though he's not intentional, that's how awful these words are. Yeah. And that's the opposite of faithful are these awful words. Disregard. It, to me, that's almost... It, it, it's... I think, I wonder, you know, homeless people who are in the streets and they get walked by all the time. They are, they are, they are like invisible. 
or they're, they're treated like they're invisible. They are disregarded by the masses. And that's horrible. Yeah. It's horrible. And we're so overwhelmed with the whole, like, whole thing. It's like, well, we can't help out everybody, so we don't help out anybody. But to be disregarded as if, if you died, nobody would care. In fact, it would, like Scrooge would say, it would deplete the population and... Deplete the surplus population. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What were you going to say? Well, what I was going to say is, and here's, here's how faithfulness makes us feel. Faithfulness makes us feel things like admiration. We feel approved of. We feel cared for. We feel concerned about, someone concerned about us. We feel esteemed. That's a great word. Um, we feel love. We feel respect. That's what faithfulness delivers as opposed to disregard. I know that um, these words that he just spoke, I'm, very, I'm a very intentional friend. And, and when I have a friendship that I'm nurturing, because I, I don't have time to have 100 friends, so it's okay if I have three. My circle is closed, you know? And, and I have lots of people I'm friendly with, but we're talking about those few golden ones, right? The ones that like know you and love you anyway. And each of those friends have a love for Jesus so significant that, that I can trust them, that they are, they are faithful to the Father, and I can trust them that if they want to teach me something or show me something about myself that might be unpleasant, they're doing it out of love. They're doing it out of, out of they want the best for me. They want me to be reflecting the Father same, as much as I want them reflecting the Father. And I want to be faithful. I want to be these words. I'm like pointing at the phone. You can't see that. I get that. I want to be, I want to be these words. That's my desire. And that takes time. And it takes you looking at you being very real with yourself and looking at the monster that is you and knowing that that monster actually, when you're in Christ, is dead. Not even you anymore. And we can live a life of gratitude to a faithful God that just didn't leave us as naked babies on the ground. He's feeding us. He started feeding us with milk, with the most simplistic things in scripture of ways to be. Believe me, he says, trust and obey me. And we begin to learn his character. But we go back to that terrible word, disregard. And I think to myself, have I been disregarded? Yes. But there was that moment when I woke up, like woke up mentally, spiritually, and I looked at myself and I realized I disregarded Jesus for the majority of my life. And that's rough. That is, he was there through every terrible thing that happened to me, just waiting for me to cry, Abba, Father. I disregarded the Savior of the world who sang over me, protected me, who never left me or forsook me. I just ignored him. I disregarded the one who breathed stars into existence, the one who knows every hair on my head, who even while I was a sinner, and rejected him and disregarded him, he died on the cross for me. And you. I don't know what your relationship with him is right now. I hope if anything you watch these videos that I've been putting out, and the encouragement is that you want more of him. And that you know that he wants all of you. And when he has all of you, he's going to do like Joseph did at the very end when he had all the food the people gave him, all their money, all their cattle, all their land. And they said, all we have left is us. And Joseph goes, that's what I want. That's what God wants you. Because you're kind of a big deal to him. He won't let you down. He is faithful. All right, God bless you. Love you.